another day, another failed Kickstarter and crowdfunded MMORPG. I don't think a deep dive video will be required here since the game only has a brief history and one without much backstory required, but I might as well give you the cliff notes so you can use Titan Reach's short lifespan as a lesson for when you're looking at future crowdfunded projects. Titan Reach launched a Kickstarter on September 16th, 2020, and they did it in probably the fairest way that I've personally seen an MMO do this to date, much more in line with how the legit non-MMO products usually do it and receive the funding required. They asked for £311,000, which is about £420,000, a number they calculated to be the cost required to get the game finished, which is uncommon, to say the least, in Kickstarter MMOs where they usually would just ask for a random amount and then string everyone along for months and months or years and years without settling on a definitive number that they would require to finish the game. As we've seen with the many Kickstarter MMOs to date, they've gone massively over budget and almost never materialised a finished product. They also launched the campaign with a demo that allowed players to log on to the Titan Reach pre-alpha which consisted of a multiplayer server, including some basic gameplay systems and, of course, entirely store-bought assets, which looked extremely generic but served the purpose of showing what the game could eventually play like, what they had so far, and it was a more action-oriented 3D runescape, essentially. They, of course, got absolutely nowhere near their initial goal, only raising 31% of their actual funds required over the 30 days in a campaign that was all or nothing, meaning they reached the amount listed, or nobody got charged a penny, no harm, no foul. So I've covered Kickstarter projects, crowdfunded MMOs as part of my full-time job now for close to three years, and followed all the projects prior to that quite closely, and my speculation as to why they didn't get funded is pretty simple. They were too honest. They presented a game that was already playable. You could see where they were currently at in development and what they wanted to eventually be. And it wasn't super ambitious for once. It wasn't super exciting. There was no outlandish promises of features that would never exist or never before existed or claims that they would be the biggest or the best thing. No curtain veiling what the game could currently look like or expensive pre-rendered trailers of a game they hadn't currently made. The people looking at this game could see exactly what it was and it wasn't all that exciting, but it was honest and realistic. A no-class system game with player-driven economy influenced by old-school social-focused MMOs, deep questing, PvE with a narrative, PvP, and no pay to win. Very simple mechanics, very simple aesthetics, and essentially just taking something we'd had for years in RuneScape, but making it a little bit more modern and accessible. Not the most exciting prospect, but something that definitely has a place in the market, and something that was definitely achievable by a small indie team of developers. The Titan Reach developers made it pretty clear if the Kickstarter doesn't pass, they will not continue development, as the number that they had listed was what they believed to be required to get the product to a finished state, and they didn't want to turn into one of those other projects that we've seen so many times that just takes people's money for the sake of it, spins their wheels, and can't finish the game. However, so many people joined the Discord, downloaded the demo, and were positive about the experience that they wound up doing that anyways. They went back on what they said, and they were convinced to try again using alternative methods. First, the idea of an Indiegogo was floated, trying to raise enough money to get to at least a few months of development covered, and use that as a platform to try and attract investors or publishers, and eventually they would turn to their own private website as a funding avenue, selling players access to testing and in-game credits to be used on cosmetics and such. They quickly raised enough money to scale up their development team to 14 people on basically minimum wage, 12 of which being full-time, for six months roughly of development. In that time, as you can see from the footage on the screen played to this point, they went from using entirely store-bought generic assets to their own art style for characters and world, making massive leaps in terms of what they had previously available in the demo. Unfortunately, as of the 30th of August 2021, they've just announced they will be closing down development, or at least in their words, pausing development, so that the employees can go and find alternative work to support themselves, as the project Titan Reach is out of money, they're out of funding. They again did this in about the most fair and transparent ways you possibly could. As soon as money got tight, they had employees take a break, and so they could drag out their funding as much as possible, and any money they raised on or after August 9th they kept separate and didn't touch in case they couldn't line up an investor or publisher so they could take that and refund people beyond that stage uh, as that was once they'd realised they might not be able to continue unless something changed drastically and of course it didn't unfortunately. Though obviously a lot of people may wind up unhappy that they didn't get a finished game or a refund from before that stage they obviously couldn't get a refund as the money had been spent to get the game to the point where they are at now. They also announced that they would leave one server open for the game as well as the website and database system 
as well as the in-game credit store so people who have leftover credits can purchase things to use in the game, but they would be closing down the ability to actually buy credits, so no one can put money towards the project anymore from this point forward. They are open to the idea of investors and publishers coming in beyond this point to revive the project, or perhaps using community volunteers to continue progressing the game forward, but have moved development into a hobbyist status where people might work on it in their spare time. But personally, I believe once the game enters this day, it's very unlikely that anything gets done, and the game might as well be over, but I would like to think I'm wrong and they can deliver what they set out to one day. I do think that they should have probably announced they were struggling with money and made more positive steps to secure funding, whether that means trying to get the game onto Steam Early Access, or at least giving the community the opportunity to save the development with another crowdfunding push. I can also see the mercy in letting it go quietly into the night, and not subjecting their fans to another round of pay me or the game goes away, which they'd already pulled a couple times to this stage. At this point, they had managed to raise and presumably spend $206,419.20 over the course of development from opening the store on the website on the 20th of December 2020 until now, which was about half of what they apparently needed to get the game finished by the end of 2022. A lot of people are going to use hindsight to criticise the decision to scale the team up from a handful of developers to 14, 12 of which were full-time in a short period of time, and blame that for them running out of funds so early on, and they do have a point, of course. Though I will say that if they had used, say, half that number of developers, the game would still be being worked on right now, but progress would have been half as fast or less. I imagine the idea that they were operating under was to get the project to a state where it could sustain itself as an actual business in a game, or attract investors to finish it off, and the optics of staying in development for an additional 6-12 to 12 months without making as much progress wouldn't inspire much confidence to be honest, sort of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for them, and something we can't say would have worked any better if the progress would have been drastically slower than it was with this larger team, although of course they would have still had money and still would have been ticking along, it wouldn't have looked as good as it does right now. So additionally the project suffered a bit of negative press in the MMO gaming sphere which probably didn't help matters, crowdfunding and kickstarter already have such a bad reputation in the MMO genre, that you're going to struggle to get positive press or sentiment in the community in the first place, but a few content creators and popular MMO news websites ran some stories that I think were pretty damaging, while also being based on very little substance, and seemed to take a misunderstanding of wording to be something more sinister, which to me just seemed like they were blowing something completely out of proportion. This likely didn't have a massive impact on the project, but at the same time, when you are a small and underfunded studio and working on something like Titan Reach, where you're doing everything you can to fight against those negative stigmas surrounding everything that they had at that stage, you know, crowdfunding, store-bought assets, a failed Kickstarter, unknown developers, it can't have helped matters at all. Though on the flip side, they did get some positive coverage too from people such as myself and the Lazy Peon for being a realistic project that seemed to be honest about their situation and their goals. That being said, that's pretty much the end of the story for Titan Reach and most of the information you need to have a well-formed opinion on the game's very short lifespan. They did pretty much everything you could possibly do in terms of promoting goodwill in the community for a project that asked for crowdfunding, gave a demo before taking a penny from anyone, told people how and where the money would go, showed constant updates to everything, including phasing out the generic store assets and adding features frequently, and yet they couldn't attract a publisher or investors and the public wouldn't continue to fund them to the point where they could actually continue. If they'd lied a little, embellished on what they were going to be, I don't think I'd be making this video right now and their funding numbers might have been considerably higher, but maybe we would be making another video about those lies had they been caught as these crowdfunded MMOs oftentimes do. It's a shame they couldn't get it over the finish line, maybe this isn't the end for Titan Reach, but for now, the development is paused indefinitely, most likely never to be unpaused. Thank you very much for watching, check the links in the video description for my social media, and if you want to stay in touch, there's Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and Patreon if you want to throw a few coins to your MMO Watcher. Appreciate you all, and I hope to see you on the next one. Stay safe out there, we out. Peace.